Have you ever been trolled on the internet? As a Twitch streamer and YouTuber, I get trolled often. A lot of people will just say something that makes you think, like, get paranoid about it. Like, hey, you got a booger. And when you're on live camera and you're like, wait, what? Seriously? And you'll go to the bathroom and check and it's nothing. Some things run very, very deep, though. This is a story about a Redditor that got trolled from a video that he posted that got to be very, very scary. We're going to react to it today. It's by Spooked. Make sure to head on over to his channel and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, guys. And if you like reaction videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel as well. Let's get into this reaction. My girlfriend and I have recently moved back into my childhood home with my parents while our own house was being built to save some cash. Okay, cool. My parents own three Australian native birds, and earlier tonight I was updating my Snapchat story to show my friends, right. as many of them always ask what the bird names are and what they look like. Right. I took three Snapchat videos, one after the other, and just put them on my story without worrying what retakes or what I looked like. Sure, it's Snapchat. Here are the three videos I saved from my story. Right, so the first one of my parents' little birds okay. is this little guy. It is little Leo. Hey. He's a cockatiel. <laughs> He's a cutie. The second little bird uh, of my parents is a rainbow lorikeet. His name is Oliver. Hello, Oliver. And there he is. Hello, poor lighting. <laughs> and here I am with my good little mate. Puffin. Within Puffin. about 15 minutes of uploading, yeah. I received an SMS message from one of my good, but not great friends that said, Ah ha ha ha, you bearded beast, those birds are mad. By the way, what the hell was in that window behind you in the last one? I, didn't I had notice. no idea what he was talking about, right. so I went and watched my own Snapchat story a couple of times. Right. On the third or fourth watch, I saw what he was talking about, and my stomach sank. What was it? I immediately saved my story videos and put the chills, them on my computer to see them in larger format. Right. In the last Snapchat video I sent, it kind of looks like someone is at the door, looking in, with their hands cupped against the door. Oh, shit. It's hard to tell because it... Snapchat videos are very poor quality. Dude, I got the chills And the door is so only bad. in the frame for probably one second. Oh. Whatever is in the third Snapchat video, however, is definitely not in the first video when the door is in full view. Right. I was the only person home at the time, and that particular door leads to the backyard. Right. Which is only accessible via a single locked gate. Now, I could have just been glare, but that's still To creepy, add some backstory bro. as to why this has me freaking out so much, I had to quickly talk about my childhood and teenage years until I moved out with my girlfriend when I turned 18. Okay. From about age 8 until age 10, I had episodes of sleep paralysis one or two times a month oh where it felt God, like a weight was worst. sitting on my chest yeah. and I could not breathe for about 40 seconds at a time. This led to insomnia and anxiety about bedtime of course, as man. I dreaded feeling helpless. I that ended up seeing so a child psychologist and whether that was or was not the reason, I was having less episodes. Okay. That was until the age of 12 or 13. For seemingly no reason at all, I started to get chronic episodes almost every night. Okay. During these episodes, I could breathe, but couldn't move. Right. The worst thing about these episodes, however, is that I felt like something was in the room with me and meant me harm, There's a which lot was common for people who experienced sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. At roughly the age of 14, though, things really took a turn. I started to hear and see things during maybe one in ten of my episodes. Okay. The things I heard were never too crazy and over the top, and were usually just thuds and creaks. However, when it came to seeing things, there was always one recurring thing. Okay. A faceless person looking into my bedroom window with their hands cupped oh, to the glass. Oh no, dude. What the but hell, the bro? One to ten minute episode, this, is so this person would just stand there and look at me. Right. Whenever the episode ended, the figure would just disappear. Over the course of four years, this occurred quite frequently. Right. But it always really made me feel totally helpless oh, and terrified. Yes. And right. I never got used to it. Right. When I moved out at age 18, I never had another episode where I saw anything. I'm 26 years old now, and I very occasionally, as in once a year, have small episodes, but right. only those in which I feel heavy chested. Yeah. Whatever is there in my Snapchat video looks almost 100% like what I used to see as a teenager That's during my crazy, sleep paralysis dude. episodes. 
To me, it kind of looks like a face to the glass, like and two hands on either side. When you're paranoid, it's made me super nervous ever since. Kind of I ended up showing my girlfriend videos. Of. She was reasonably freaked out, given my past sleep paralysis, yeah. but explained that, at the end of the day, it really could have been anything. She also brought up the logical fact that we have been here for a little while, and nothing has happened. True. In the few days after, she kept telling me a bunch of things that could have happened, and the main thing I took on board was that if someone was really out there, possibly looking at the house to rob me, I needed to have proper proof if they ever did that while I was home. Sure. I repurposed an old Galaxy S3, and I made sure it was always charged. Yeah! I also made a mental note that when it was unavoidable to be here alone, that all doors would be locked yeah. and all curtains would be closed over. Okay. I have the direct line to the local police saved as a contact in my phone, and I've looked into getting a priest in the area, even though I'm a skeptic about the paranormal. Right. From last Saturday, when I took the Snapchat videos until Thursday, things were fine. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen or heard anything out of the ordinary except for a motion sensor light turning on out the back sporadically at night. Okay. The fear was basically fading away and I was going to update you guys and basically bore you all to death with a story of nothingness. But Unfortunately, I would have liked that much That's better why than we have the current story reality. Now. On Thursday night, I had my first paralysis episode in roughly a year. Okay. I went to bed at roughly 10 p.m. next to my girlfriend, and awoke some time around 3.30 a.m., facing the back of her head. Mm -hmm. I couldn't move at all, and started to panic as the window was just past her head at the other side of the bed. Did you see I it? didn't see anyone looking into the window, okay. but I did feel the dread that comes with an episode and felt like a presence was with us in the room, right. like something was standing behind us. Oh, no. As soon as I came to realize this, I woke my girlfriend up, hyperventilating, in an empty room of course, mm -hmm. and got to sleep by 5. I woke up on Friday Sounds and went to work. To me, Nothing was out of the ordinary. I will say, however, that the whole day I somewhat dreaded being home alone that night, mm -hmm. as if it was the first night I would be alone since I filmed those Snapchats last week. Right. I can't just go out every Friday and Saturday night until midnight just to avoid the house though, right. so I was trying to not be too concerned. Yeah. On Friday night, my parents left the house around 7pm, and my partner left the house at around 8.30. Okay. Things were great and I was just starting to play some games with some friends on Steam. There you go. This went on for a couple of hours, until at around 10.15 p.m., when something went down. Okay. I started to hear some relatively loud banging that I could hear even though I had a headset on. It was coming from outside the screen door, oh, which no. was the same door in the Snapchat videos I showed you. Right. It was definitely scraping or banging around out there on the back pavers. I stayed silent. And I carefully the took the headset off now. my head. The ambience is so I got up right off now. my chair, took my Galaxy S3, and started filming just in front of the door. Right. Oh god, y'all. I'm freaking out right now a little bit. Dude. Okay, nothing in here. Okay, back door. Fuck. He heard the bang again. Oh my god, dude. Spooked, you are a madman and a genius. Look at the ambience right now. Something out the back window. You ain't gonna be able to see nothing outside. Oh yeah, he can a little bit. What the fuck, man? <sighs> okay. When I started filming, the noises immediately got louder so and more frequent. Tense, man. I didn't want to open the curtains in case someone was right outside the door in right. the dark. So I walked through the kitchen into the laundry and turned the outside lights on. Yeah. The only way in or out to the backyard is down the left side of the house. So as soon as the back lights were on, I walked over to a window on the left side of the house that looks out at the only easy escape route. Right. At this point, something loud occurred from outside the opposite end of the house. This scared the absolute hell out of me. Yeah. So I circled the house to stay out of the light and filmed that window from a distance for a couple of seconds. 
case you'd see I then turn yeah. the eternal light on in the kitchen and film out the back kitchen window for a few more seconds. Right. I couldn't see anything at all, so I stopped recording. Nothing happened after what you saw in the video. I didn't call the cops. I didn't go outside. Huh. I kept all the lights in the house on right. and stayed away from all the windows until my parents got home at around 11 p.m. My partner got home around midnight. I told her what happened, and like me, she was pretty freaked out. Yeah. Ever since I posted this on Reddit, someone in the comments posted an enhanced version of the video. Oh, no. As it can be seen in the video, the big mass in the corner what is not meant to be. What the hell? As the Redditor also pointed out, that figure is not there at the end of the video. <laughs> now here's so my question. So it's trolling, right? How did whatever that was get out of the room, given that I was standing in front of it for a good 15 seconds? Right. Here's another picture I took as I was leaving that area. I showed this to my girlfriend, and she agreed we should leave for the night. Yeah. We didn't feel comfortable anymore being there. It said it's it now was been trolled, about two though, weeks since, right? and my girlfriend and I are staying That's at the our friend's house video. until it's the just end so of the working freaky, week. Man. Nothing that we notice has been stolen from the house, and the birds are fine. The police didn't want me talking too much about everything, sure. but they believed that a two-man team tried to rob my parents while they were away. <laughs> oh God! When one got in and realized I was home, his buddy tried to make noise to lure me outside, and when it didn't work, he slipped out. That's some elaborate crap right there. My problem with this right theory there. is that all doors and windows were locked from the outside when they came. Right. So how did these guys get in? The cops think maybe the one guy came in through the roof. This would mean that whoever slipped out behind me towards the end of my video had to slowly walk up the stairs and go into my parents' room and climb into my roof, all the while I was right under them. Right. I'm still freaking the hell out. Yeah. I, I imagine so, dude. Like... <sighs> If this is a trolling, it's a good one, right? And when the cops start making up claims that give you ideas to verify that you're not crazy and that your your fears may actually have been true. Oh my God, dude. This was so damn good, Spook. So good, bruh. Y'all make sure to subscribe to this guy. His stories are amazing. The ambiences you put, I can't talk enough about them. Guys, another couple of videos that I reacted to Spook from here as well. Thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Ulgit signing off, and we'll see you next time. Break it down.